Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. I hope you're having a good day today. All right, we are gonna get into talking about my to-do list system, which has been kind of an ever-changing trial session to see like, not a trial, but like trying trial periods for different sorts of things. So let's talk about my planning right now. Right now, if you watch my channel, you know that I am in Passion Planner and Classic, which leads me plenty of room for to-do lists at the bottom here. But what I was realizing is this sits out on my desk every day, open mostly, on my desk in the kitchen. And what happens is I don't always come and like check off stuff. And this is kind of big to be carrying around the house or with me anywhere. I mean, it's not big, but I mean, I guess I just, I needed a different system. My to-do list just down here, I still use it for certain things, um, but I usually transfer it into my notebook over here that I'll show you. I just wasn't completely utilizing it. I thought I would absolutely love having a big room for a to-do list down here, and I do like it for scribbling things down or laying out the week in advance. But when it comes to working through my daily to-do list, I take things off here and let me show you what I've been doing. Um, well, first of all, I've tried to use my Emily Lay daily because most of you guys know, watch my Emily Lay video and you'll know, I've planned with her, this is my third year, but I stopped using her maybe around April, um, May, when I started in my passion planner because number one, I've talked about it in all my other videos, I hate her show through the um, ghosting so bad on the pages. And the pages just weren't what I needed anymore. I wasn't using it for my main planning and so I needed it for a daily to-do list. And as far as for a daily to-do list, it just wasn't working for me. With the time slots and the page being divided, it wasn't the best format for me to have. You can see the ghosting through there. It wasn't the best format for me to have a daily to-do list in. Like here's some days I've tried recently um, in July to try to do my daily to-do list and I just don't like it as much. It just doesn't function. The page doesn't function as well for me. Um, and just, yeah, it just doesn't function as well for me and the ghosting bothers me. So, and also I'm carrying around this big book for just my daily to-do list. And I've already said that's why, um, unless I went back to daily planning, I wouldn't buy this just for a daily to-do list, okay? But I already had it. So, and if you need daily planning, I mean, I think it's a great daily planner. But here is what I have been using. My Erin Condren little hardbound notebook that came free with pre-order. And I didn't even do the pre-order. My sister actually did, but she didn't want the notebook. So she handed it off to me. And, oh my goodness, I found out it's one of my new favorite things. And let me explain a lot of reasons why. And so I've since then ordered two more. And I'm thinking in my next order I need to get more um, because I really like them. It is, you know I use a Leuch germ for some of my big permanent lists and stuff. But it is smaller than a Leuchtturm in the width and in the thickness. So it's just lighter weight and it's smaller, okay? And the pages also um, are thicker than a Leuchtturm. So I could use a Leuchtturm for this and someday I might go to that. But for right now, this is, this is working for me. So if you want to see a full review on this notebook, I have a full video on that on my channel. But what I've been using it for is my weekly and daily to-do list. And it has been working just so marvelously for me. I can't tell you how excited I am that this system is working. It's small enough that what I do is I actually carry it around my house. Because one of the annoying things about a two-story is half the time I'll be upstairs um, because all our bedrooms are upstairs, including mine. So I'm upstairs a lot, and half the time I will be upstairs when I need to write something down. Because my bedroom is where I store my computer. It's kind of like a second desk up there in my room. It's a second setup, so when I'm upstairs, 
I'm in my bedroom a lot doing stuff there at my computer station. And so I needed a list I could just take with me anywhere. And I can also take this in the car, but mainly I just carry it around the house. <laughs> and I don't worry about how neat or messy or how the notebook is not falling apart. I'm not worried about it getting torn up. It has gotten pretty roughed up already in the like, um, when did I start using this? Let's see. Okay, June 2nd is the first page that I started using it for a list. So, and now it's like July um, 19th. So, there you go. I've used about this much from June 2nd to July 19th. And so, like, I have a little magnet clip right here. And that's kind of like my YouTube video ideas, which now that they're kind of messy and I've made some of them, I'll probably make a whole new list on another page and restart that, but it's just something for me to go on. And then the system I've worked out in here is, which I've never done this before, except for at the bottom of my passion planner, made just a weekly to-do list. And this has worked really well. So I make my weekly to-do list and I add on as the week goes on. And yes, that's a lot, but it's only Wednesday midday and I've already crossed out that many. So I'm pretty happy about that. Then on this side for the same week, so each week would get a two page spread here. I would list out any errands I need to do. And then I list any appointments by the day and in order. So, so that I will not miss those. And I like them to kind of stand out in a different color or highlight around them. So these are the errands I need to do. These are the appointments. This is just a food random list at the bottom there, which isn't always on every page. Some stuff to add to my Target grocery list downstairs so I can just scribble notes in there. And then this week I was trying out my daily list back in Emily Lake because I just wanted to see. I hate just, you know, wasting planners, but it's not really wasted because I used it for a lot of the year and I'm using it for my channel. But I wanted to try it again for my daily to do since, you know, every page has a date and I thought I can use it through the end of the year. But it's just... I'm not loving it, so I need to stay with this. It's just one little notebook with everything. So this week, I started out my daily to-do list in here like I had been doing, but I went back to the Emily Lay to try that. I am not going to be using the Emily Lay. So I'll show you what my previous week looks like, kind of. So I was doing after my weekly two-page spread. So of my to-dos, my errands, my appointments. Um, after that for the week... Then I would just go into each day. Some days would take a whole page. Some days I can fit two in a page. So it just depends. So I'll just write the date. <coughs> okay, so I will just write the date. And then I will just do my daily to-do list based off of my weekly. So I'll look at my weekly. I will look at my passion planner and see what we have planned for that day. And I'll look here and I will plan my day off of that. So here's my dailies, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And this certain week I didn't do one for Sunday. I usually do. I just went into my next week. So that was a Sunday when I probably just did a list on a piece of scratch paper, which sometimes still happens. But so how I'm using this in conjunction with my passion planner so it just works great. I just leave this in here. It sits up at my computer station in my bedroom if I'm upstairs, or it sits downstairs on my kitchen table or my desk when I'm downstairs, and it's just something constant that I'm checking, looking in, leaving it open a lot, and marking stuff off in. And it has really kept me on track better than any other to-do list method. I've talked about in other videos how I've used just a legal pad. Um... And that is certainly great. In fact, I would rather use a legal pad than the Emily Lay, to be honest, because this is small just to carry around, and this is heavy and big, and the lines don't make sense to me for, for to-do lists. So I would rather use this, and I've talked about in my one, two, three video how for the day I would always do one, two, three, and then my next three, one, two, three. And I do still do that in here, but not every day. I find myself really needing that during the school year when my time is so limited and mapped out between a kid in public school, a kid homeschooling, plus all my other responsibilities. 
So I definitely my one, two, three first, and then my next one, two, three, and then my next one, two, three. In the summer, I can just kind of list it all for the day and go from there. So the summer's kind of different. How do I use my passion planner? Because it seems like, you know, everything's in the blue notebook, you might be asking. Okay, so let me raise this up a little more so you can get this whole page in here. All right. So I still need this because this is not, you know, for advanced planning. This is just as it comes right then. And so for like planning out my week ahead, you can see that this is next week. I already have a lot of stuff written down. So I will look at this list and I will work it into my blue notebook basically. So when I'm thinking ahead for weeks ahead, appointments or certain days to do as we have that for that day. I will write it all in my passion planner so I still have all my appointments and to do's. This is two weeks ahead. This is three weeks ahead. I will still have it in my passion planner. And then when that week comes, I will consult my passion planner. And I still consult my passion planner every morning to make sure I'm not missing anything. And it records so much pertinent information for me to go back on and look at. Like what day did my son mow the lawn? So what day does he need to mow it the next week? Just all those types of things. Um, so I definitely still utilize this every day and I still need a planner. This is just, you know, I go to it for the week and then I make my, this is my to-do list notebook really for weekly and daily and keeps me on track that way. So that is really how I am planning now. I will pop in and tell you, some of you guys are probably wondering, the ones who have watched all my videos, what is this line I've drawn in here? Because I have not had that before. So what I was finding, you know, I was trying to figure out my best way to use the Passion Planner. I used to be putting my appointments in like when they were happening, like at the exact time. So there would be different stuff popping up at different times of day. And what that was doing for me was all my to-dos, I wasn't using my to-do list notebook yet. I was just using like a legal pad to scratch it out at this point, but all my to-dos would go in between. And I mean, I was getting mixed up having to really look for the appointment times down my list. So I decided, and then I would also try to put any big appointments that day or timed things at the top in today's focus, because that's just how my brain thinks. So for me, instead of just having an appointment like right here mapped out. I mean, it would be in the today's focus too, but it kind of broke up my list for the day and I would have to look down to check all my appointments. So I had this idea and starting next week is when it starts. I think it's going to work really well for me. I drew a line at around nine o'clock and I might bump it up at 10 o'clock to give more room. I'm not going to do my appointments timed, write them out timed. I'm just going to write any appointments or place we have to go for the day, because those are the things that rules my life as a stay-at-home mom, um, then everything else for my day can fall in wherever I want it. So any appointments or places we have to go for the day are going to go above this line. Um, and yeah, I'm probably, I bumped the line down a little bit already back here, and I'm probably going to bump it down more. And then all just my to-dos for the day are going to go below it, like things that I'm thinking of ahead of time. I will still use my to-do list notebook, but anything else so that I will be able to easily just look at my week and see these are any appointments or places we have to go or be at or an appointment at our house, somebody coming here. So that's what that line is in my passion planner. I know lots of people don't utilize the time in their passion planner. And so that's kind of how I'm going to try doing it. I'm going to have that up there and then all the rest of my to-dos down here. But that's how I'm using my passion planner with my to-do list notebook right now, and it is working out great. And like I said, I mean, I could use a Leuchtturm if I didn't have the um, Emily, not Emily, if I didn't have the Erin Condren hardbound notebook, I could use a Leuchtturm. It's just a little bit bigger, bigger and a little bit heavier, and I like this being thinner, more lightweight, and just, it's going to use up faster, and that's actually good for me because then I just, I want to start a brand new one, and I don't want to carry around something too heavy and have like, you know, 200 pages in it. So I think this has something like 78 pages, and they're thicker pages than the Leuchtturm. 
I've just stuck some stickers in there for fun. Some old Erin Condren stickers that my sister had handed off to me. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I would love to hear about any um, to-do list ideas, how you do your to-do list or what you write it in. Or if you just keep it all in your planner. I love to hear how other people plan because I'm just so interested in that. And it always gives me like new ideas. Even if I'm not needing those ideas in this season of my life, I will like remember those ideas and then they'll come to me when I need them as my life changes by the seasons. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll see you next time.